Hello, I am finally ready to discuss religion in fantasy. Today I'm going to start with a basic overview of the role religion plays in societies and the role it can play in a fantasy world. And I'm going to cover the major types of religion from polytheism, monotheism, animism, totemism, spiritualism and atheism. Now I am going to skim across those types like a gazelle leaping across the plains because I am going to do deep dives into each of those types individually in future videos in this series. After I've given you those types, I'm going to give you a flow chart of questions to decide which one of these types is right for your world. Before we get into it, please do hit the subscribe button down below. It really does help the channel grow. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Okay, let's get cracking. First, what does religion do in a society? Religion in a non-fantastical society has got two major roles. Its psychological role is to answer the big questions. Um, that is to say questions like, why are we here? Why is there suffering? Uh, why do children die and parents survive? Um, why, why was I born? What is my purpose? Um, and that's, that's kind of the psychological purpose. And um, before there was science, we did a lot of hand-waving with religion as a species of like God created the world or the gods made the world or Prometheus stole fire or, you know, what, whatever we needed to cover with religion. And that's, that was our psychological crutch for, you know, how, why things were the way they were. And the other role that religion plays in societies is um, it helps mediate tensions arising from the social contract. In fantasy, religions have one other major role that they can play. They can be the source of your magic. Priest magic in D&D is a very typical example of this, where the priests offer up prayers to their god. Their god then gives them the power to match that prayer and enact that uh, power through them. Um, in David Edding's second series, uh, the Tamuli and the uh, Illinium, this is how the magic worked there. It was all the power of the gods given to people through prayer. It's also done this way in Star Wars. Um, the Force is a spiritual religious energy that powers the magic of the Star Wars universe. And yes, I absolutely count Star Wars as fantasy, not as science fiction. Fight me in the comments if you will. Okay, so that's the major roles that religion plays in a society in general and also in a fantastical society, a society where magic is real. Now let's talk about those different religious types, starting with polytheism. So polytheism is where you have multiple gods. Yeah? Uh, examples of this in our world, so many. The Romans and the Greeks, of course, lead to mind. The Orisa the Uris um, from the Yoruba Uri people who live in Nigeria. That's an amazing pantheon. It's, it's, uh, they're, they're a lovely set of gods. Um, if you want to research into that, links in the comments down below. Highly advise them as historical inspiration for your fantasy pantheon. Now, how polytheism generally works is each god has a portfolio that they're responsible for covering, right? So you'd have a god of the weather, something like a Zeus equivalent. You'd have a god of the sea. Um, in the uh, Orisha example, that's Olikun, um, who, by the way, is a non-binary god. How cool is that? Anyway, um, so... These, the, the defining characteristic, besides being that there's multiple gods with multiple portfolio, is that these gods are quite often quite involved in their worshippers' life, and they often come and visit their worshippers and cause mayhem and havoc. If you think about the Greek myths, 
Probably about half of them start with Zeus got horny, screwed a mortal, and Juno got angry. Like, that's kind of what happens <laughs> with... And I think I'm, I think I have mixed Greece, Greek and Roman up royally there. That's, that's a very fun element from a fantasy author or a game runner, tabletop gaming point of view. Because your gods can be very involved in what's going on in the world below them. And that can be a great story point for you. Another fun thing about polytheism is that it involves multiple temples which can politic plot and scheme against each other, which of course give rise to tensions, and tensions give rise to plots, and plots create stories. So you've got a lot of, a lot of really good elements here, which is why polytheism is so popular amongst fantasy authors. There is a downside, however, to polytheism, and that is that you have, it's quite a lot of work, okay? So you've got to define the gods, you've got to define the portfolios, you have to define six different churches or eight different churches or a dozen different churches and all of their religious ceremonies, their festivals, advice for festivals over there, uh, festivals, their pomp, vestments, all of these things have to be done for every church that you use. So it can be quite a lot of work to keep it straight and to define it and show it well to consumers of your world. So if that sounds like a lot of work and you don't really want a god, a, you don't really want a set of gods who are so deeply involved in people's life and you don't want to turn into the forgotten realms because let's face it, you don't ever want to turn into the forgotten realms with gods popping down every five freaking minutes to sort out people's problems. Monotheism might be the way for you. Now, monotheism is where you have a single god that is generally the creator of all things or something equivalent to that. Not always, though, but sometimes. Um, and it tends to be a more distant god. The god very rarely comes down, very rarely directly interferes. The obvious examples in our world is the three Abrahamic religions, but I'm not going to discuss them because those are tender topics and I, I would rather not discuss them on my world building channel. So I'm going to instead talk about Zoroasterism. So I know technically Zoroasterism has got a good and a bad a devil and a god, but it's primarily monotheistic because you're, you're only supposed to worship the good side. So <clears throat> Zoroastrianism is basically a, a religion where you worship um, the, the good god of the light, Ahura Mazda, and um, it's got a threefold path, good thoughts, good deeds, good words. It is a non-expansionistic religion, that is to say it does not convert. Okay? Um, you can only be born into it, you cannot convert into it. So it's a very interesting inspiration if you're looking for a monotheistic uh, religion to, to draw from, from for your world. A fantasy example. Um, so I do want to say that one of the characteristics of monotheism is that um, the god is almost always disappointed in its creation. Like that is, it's just a staple of monotheism. The, it, it, the, the god is cast generally in a father figure and is generally disappointed in the creation. An example of this from fantasy um, is Warhammer 40k and again I absolutely count Warhammer 40k amongst fantasy. Fight me in the comments if you think it's sci-fi. Uh, now in Warhammer 40k the god emperor is the single god of the empire of man it's an expansionistic religion, which is fairly typical of monotheism, although not always true, as I said. He would be very disappointed if he was aware of where his empire was, since he wanted his empire to be an, atheism, an atheistic empire based on the principles of science, and they ended up worshipping him. You know, sometimes you just can't win. Um, and he is completely remote and non-interactive from his civilization. So very much a monotheistic 
um, religion and it's done very well. If you don't know the 40k universe and you've never role played in it, man you are missing out. Links down below to Warhammer 40k um, role playing as offered by Fantasy Flight. Highly recommended as a gaming world. So the good thing about monotheism is that your god is, gener is generally remote so you don't have to worry so much about interacting with your god and the way that people interact with them and, and direct interference. The bad thing is that your god is generally omnipotent. So you need to come up with a reason as to why he's not interfering. So, you know, maybe they're battling demons, maybe they're actually like half dead on a golden throne, maybe they are... Um, just not into interfering, although why then did they create the world? So you need to come up with some, some reasons there as to why uh, the god does not interfere if they're omnipotent. Those two, polytheism and monotheism, are both types of religion that emphasize the godhead, right? But you don't have to have a godhead for a, for a religion. Animism is an example of a belief in the natural world as your godhead, right? So this is where you have spirit animals or spirits of rocks or the natural world. So in our world, the religion that, that does this um, is Shintao from Japan. And basically this is what the kami are in the Shintao religion. You have kami of the streams and kami of the animals and kami of the trees and all of these spirits form your, your, your godhead in the religion. Um, this was done very, very well in Ghost of Tsushima, which is a PlayStation game that I recently played. Such a gorgeous storyline, such a beautiful world. If you have a PlayStation and you have not played Ghost of Tsushima, go play Ghost of Tsushima. You will love it. Examples of animism in fantasy include Jim Butcher's Genius Loci, uh, the Demon Reach island that he discovers later on in the books. George R. R. Martin, of course, famously does the uh, trees with faces on, which is animism um, in, in terms of the spirit of the trees and, and the northern religion that's built around it. So that's, that's kind of like, it's, it's all about the, the natural world and its spirits. The good thing about using this as a religion is that you've got thousands of little spirits everywhere. So wherever you go, you can dig up a little spirit relevant to the moment in time that you need that spirit and what story you need. Need to guide your play the players down the garden path, have a little, you know, a little kami of the stream pop up and say, this way guys, this way, this way. So you've, you've got a lot of good options. The downside is, because it's so many, it's generally a very distributed organization. So if you're looking to have a formal organized religion, this is probably not where you want to be. And it's not a personal relationship between the spirit and the, um, and the people involved. For personal relationships, you need to turn to totemism. Now, totemism is a kinship relationship between a spirit and an individual or a spirit and a group of individuals. It's generally also associated with a shaman type tradition where there's a shaman who identifies the totem of the person. It's done very well in fantasy by Jane M. All in her Earth Children series. Now, if you haven't read that series, I do recommend it, however I recommend it with a warning. There are some extremely not safe for work, outright pornographic scenes, especially in the later books. My advice to you, if you don't like reading that kind of style, which I didn't, to be honest, uh, when they start on a sex scene, just flip until the sex scene ends. There's no story in the sex scenes, they're, they're just sex scenes. So, but the story is fantastic. The world building is gorgeous um, and it uses totemism. So Isla's personal totem is, uh, the, is, is the cave lion. It's set in a prehistoric uh, world. 
and the people that she grew up with who were Neanderthals, their totem is the cave bear. Um, and there's this whole concept among them that women get pregnant when the man's totem defeats the woman's totem in battle. So it's, it's a really, it's a great example of totemism and how to use totemism as a religion. It's just a pity about the sex scenes. Okay, moving on. Uh, a good thing about using totemism as your religion is that it's personalized to you. So it can drive the story. Isla being chosen by the cave lion drives a lot of the story. It makes her life difficult because strong totems are hard to live with. They demand a lot from people that they've chosen. Um, it's a, so you can really use totems to drive your story. On the other hand, because it's so personal, because totemism is very personal, it's almost never an organized religion. At most you'll have a local shaman who chooses the totem uh, for the baby or for the young adult or whenever they're chosen as a totem. So again, if you're looking for an organized religion, not for you. But that's still a degree of Godhead, right? Totem, totems, animal spirits, those are still, to a degree, they're Godheads. Spiritualism is where you completely start de-emphasizing the Godhead. And you emphasize instead people's connection to each other and the social contract and social order. Exa an example of this from our own world is Confucianism, which is pretty much 100% based around the philosophy as taught by Confucius. A an example of this from fantasy is, as I said, Star Wars with the Force and the religion of the Jedi around it. Um, I went with spiritualism in my world as well. I added a little bit of ancestor worship just to give myself something to hang my hat on because I was building a kind of reincarnation based world. It's an easy option if you don't want to emphasize a godhood and you don't need to define gods. On the other hand, it does mean that you need to define a whole whack ton of philosophy. Eh? Because otherwise, it's not really spiritualism. It's just every man defining his own social contract. And that's not really going to work. Because that's going to feel very sloppy. All right? So don't use spiritualism just because it seems so easy. And they're not defined. And don't, you know, and they're not put in the work for the philosophy. Because then you're just going to look sloppy. Nobody wants to look sloppy. All right. The last religious type is atheism, but atheism, I guess I'm going to talk about atheism as a religious type, but atheism isn't really a religion, right? It's, atheism is when you say that there is no afterlife, there is no Godhead, it is all just, we are all just animals, like this is where we're at. A fantasy example of an author who does this well is Anne McCaffrey in the Pern novels where she basically just flat out ignores religion as a force and the whole society is an atheistic society. The bad thing about using atheism is that you can't have a soft magic system because you cannot have something that is completely inexplicable and has real world effects and expect people to not believe. Right, as a global, like that's that's not going to happen. So if you build an atheistic an atheist, atheistic society, even if they don't, even if the people in the society don't fully understand everything, everything has to have a rational, explainable reason. Even if they will only gradually learn it over time, or perhaps even never learn it. So atheism does mean hard magic systems only good science behind every fantastical element. That is a downside. Okay, let's move on from atheism to five guiding questions. Here is your flowchart for picking your religion for your fantasy world. Your first question is, do you want a godhead? Do you want actual gods involved in your religion? If your answer is no, then you need to ask yourself, do you want to have spiritualism or do you want to have science-based? If you want spiritualism, then go in the direction of the spiritualism religions like the Force, Confucianism, etc. 
if you want science-based religion, uh, if, if you want a science-based society, then design an atheist society. Make sure you do a hard magic system. If you want a godhead, ask yourself, how much organization do you want in your religion? How much do you want to have um, church politics? How much pomp and ceremony do you want around your religion? If you want to have a high level of organization, then you need to go in the direction of um, monotheism or polytheism. And how you decide between them is how involved do you want the Godhead to be? If you want the Godhead to be very involved, go for polytheism. If you want the Godhead to be remote, then go for monotheism. If you want a low level of organization in your religion, um, then ask yourself whether you want a personal guiding force or whether you want to have a general worship of your, um, of your Godhead. If you want a general worship of your Godhead, go in the direction of animism. If you want a personal driving force, go in the direction of totemism. And that is how you pick your religion for your fantasy world. Um, if you've liked this video, please do give it a thumbs up button. Uh, and I will see you on Tuesday for a deep dive into polytheism and how to define it in a fantasy world.